And our team coverage continues with 7 News reporter Amanda Cost. And Amanda, you're retracing the moments leading up to and following the shooting. Yeah, and Jazz in the Park, it was just wrapping up in City Park near the pavilion. Denver police officers, they were trying to break up a fight, move it away from the crowd, then gunshots. From ducking to rushing. Crowds directed away from gunfire. 7 News obtaining this cell phone video from a witness, capturing the panic moments after the deadly shooting. They said the police officer down. Responding officers learning the victim, one of their own. The suspected shooter on the run. Still armed with the gun, left heading towards the museum. Armed with a witness description. We got a guy with a gun over here by the uh, entrance to the uh, museum. Officers find the man, the gun. We got him in custody. And a way out. We need paramedics to get in here now. All they could do was rush to where help was waiting. Nearly a dozen police cars escorting the ambulance to Denver Health. Soon learning their fellow officer didn't make it. And I was in the courtroom this morning as Roland Oliver, the suspected shooter, made his first appearance on investigation of first-degree murder. He was standing in a red jumpsuit with his head held low. Now, although he is in jail, Denver police told us that this investigation is not over. Reporting live in the newsroom, Amanda Cost, 7 News. Right, Amanda, thank you. And 7 News has obtained a number of pictures of Roland Oliver, including this one. We've obscured his face until police complete their lineups. And the Call 7 investigators have also just confirmed through an experienced official familiar with the juvenile court that Oliver was charged with a weapons offense back in 2008. Call 7 investigator, investigator pardon me, John Ferrugia asking how many Denver police officers were assigned at the City Park event to support one another should any issues arise within that big crowd. And John, you found that there are some officers who were pulled from the venue uh, just right before they began. Yeah, that's right, Mike. We found that a number of officers assigned to the gang unit who were to have been at the jazz concert were pulled away just after 5 p.m. to cover a gang-related shooting at 33rd and Hudson. Now, one person there was shot in the face but survived. Now, we asked Denver police how many officers were pulled and how many total officers were working that park venue along with Selena Hollis, who was killed. We referred to the manager of safety, who in a written response told us this afternoon in a release that that release would be contrary to public interest. Now, a senior police official tells me the staffing of the weekly concerts is flexible, saying that on Sunday there were six paid off-duty officers, including Officer Hollis. In addition, officers from various districts and commands are brought in to supplement on an as-needed basis. We also asked what the minimum staffing is at any Sunday conference in City Park. Late this afternoon, the manager of safety's office refused to give us that information nor tell us how it compares to previous concerts. Again, saying that all of that is contrary to the public interest. Now, we also want to know, Mike, how many reported incidents, major or minor, right. are at these weekly concerts, just to get a sense of kind of what the trouble might be there. Manager of safety says police don't track that data. Interesting. John, yeah. thanks very much. We know the investigators will continue to follow up on this story. 7 News continuing to dig into the events surrounding the shooting of Officer Selena Hollis. For more information about Officer Hollis and the events surrounding last night's shooting at City Park, log on to the DenverChannel.com.